Hello and welcome back. Lecture 7-2, Energy and Power Signals. The objectives for today's lecture are to define the energy and power spectrum for energy and power signals, to define the energy and power spectrum for energy and power signals. Theory, if x of t and y of t are signals, possibly complex valued, then the integral from negative infinity to infinity, x of t, y conjugate of t dt, is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity x of j omega y conjugate of j omega d omega over 2 pi. Note that x of j omega is the Fourier transform of x of t and y of j omega is the Fourier transform of y of t. Sometimes in the lecture you will see x of omega and sometimes you will see x of j omega. It is very important to emphasize that those are equivalent it's just that the j is sometimes left off. To prove this, we're first going to write the integral from negative infinity to infinity, x of t, y conjugate of t, dt. And then we're going to rewrite the integral from negative infinity to infinity by rewriting x of t as its Fourier, inverse Fourier transform. So this is going to be the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of v, e to the jvt, dv over 2 pi, times the integral from negative infinity to infinity y conjugate of omega e to the negative j omega t d omega over 2 pi dt. So rearranging the integrals this can be written as the integral from negative infinity to infinity the integral from negative infinity to infinity x of v y conjugate of omega, the integral from negative infinity to infinity, e to the j v t, e to the negative j omega t, dt, dv over 2 pi, d omega over 2 pi. So what you should notice here is that these are the product of complex exponentials and we have proven in a prior lecture that this means they are orthogonal. And since they are orthogonal, the result of them would be 2 pi delta of omega minus v. When you take the integral of these two, the product of these two complex exponentials. So rearranging again, we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity, quantity, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of v, delta of omega minus v, dv, y conjugate of omega, d omega over 2 pi. So now I'm going to pull x of omega out of the integral. So I'm going to have the integral from minus to infinity to infinity, x of omega, times the quantity, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, delta of omega minus v, dv, y conjugate of omega, d omega over 2 pi. And finally, this equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity, x of omega. Notice that this term right here is 1. So we have y conjugate of omega, d omega over 2 pi, which yields the original equation. In the special case where y of t is equal to x of t, we have Parseval's theorem. It is also referred to as the energy or power conservation theorem, where energy in the time domain is equal to energy in the frequency domain, or the integral from minus infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of t squared dt, is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the magnitude of x of j omega squared d omega over 2 pi. Note that the integral from minus infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of t squared dt, is the energy in x of t, and the magnitude of x of j omega squared is called the energy spectrum. Note only energy signals have an energy spectrum. Example 1. Find the energy in the signal x of t equals e to the minus a t u of t, where a is greater than zero. So the first thing we're going to do is to find the Fourier transform. x of j omega is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity, e to the minus a t u of t, 
e to the negative j omega t dt, which equals the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus at e to the negative j omega t dt, which equals the integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative quantity a plus j omega t dt, which is equal to 1 over negative the quantity a plus j omega e to the negative a plus j omega t evaluated from 0 to infinity which equals 1 over a plus j omega. Note that sometimes it's easier to find the energy in the frequency domain or the time domain. You just have to make a choice. So the magnitude of x of j omega is equal to 1 over the square root of a squared plus omega squared. So the energy, the magnitude of x of j omega squared would be equal to 1 over a squared plus omega squared. So the spectrum shows how energy is distributed across frequencies. And what we see here is that the energy is mostly concentrated at low frequencies. And this is easy to see if you plot the magnitude of x of j omega squared. It has the following shape which shows that most of the energy is concentrated at low frequencies. Where well, here's the origin, 0, here's a and negative a. And the value at a and negative a is 1 over 2a squared. And the value at the origin is 1 over a squared. So this is referred to as the energy spectrum. And now we need to integrate or find the area under x of j omega squared in order to find energy using Parseval's theorem. So this is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity x of j omega magnitude squared d omega over 2 pi, which equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity x of magnitude of x of t squared dt. which equals the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus 2at dt which equals 1 over 2a and this would be the energy in x of t and I can also solve for the integral for the area under x of j omega squared by doing 1 over 2 pi the integral from negative infinity to infinity the magnitude of x of j omega squared d omega, which I now know is 1 over 2a. So solving for the integral from negative infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of j omega squared d omega equals pi over a, which is the area under the curve. So as I stated, sometimes it's easier to solve the problem in the time domain or frequency domain. It really depends on the expression. So in this case, we could have found the area under the curve in the frequency domain, but that would have required us to do an arctangent in order to find that integral for that 1 over a squared plus omega squared. So it was easier to use the exponential. Example 2. Now suppose x of t is applied to a low-pass filter h of omega. How large must we make b the bandwidth for the low-pass filter so that the output contains 90% of the energy in x of t? So the first thing we're going to do is to draw a system model. So here we have our input x of t. Here we have the low pass filter. And then here we have our output y of t. So x of t in the time domain is e to the minus at u of t. And in the frequency domain, x of j omega is equal to 1 over, 1 over the square root of a squared plus omega squared and x of j omega's quantity magnitude squared is equal to 1 over a squared plus omega squared. And our low pass filter, it's an ideal low pass filter, so it has the following shape where the magnitude is a 1, the bandwidth is b, 
and this is in the frequency domain. So the width of the low pass filter would be 2B or W is equal to 2B. So Y of J omega is equal to H of J omega times X of J omega. So this is for LTI systems in the frequency domain. The convolution becomes multiplication. But I want to find the energy, so I'm going to take the magnitude. So the magnitude of the frequency squared, y of j omega squared equals the magnitude of the product, h of j omega, x of j omega squared, which can also be written as the magnitude of y of j omega squared equals the magnitude of h of j omega squared times the magnitude of x of j omega squared. So looking at our model again in the frequency domain, since our input is the magnitude of x of j omega squared, and it has the following shape, and now it's going through our low pass filter, which magnitude squared is exactly the same as the original for the low pass filter. Then the output, the magnitude of y of j omega squared, it's going to have a similar shape to the input, except it's going to be chopped off at the bandwidth of the low pass filter. So we're going to have minus B, zero, and B, where the maximum of A is one over A squared, and the value at A here is one over two A squared, and the value at negative A here is one over two A squared. And now to calculate the energy in y of t, that's going to equal the integral from negative infinity to infinity, the magnitude of y of t squared dt, which equals the integral from minus b to b, 1 over a squared plus omega squared d omega over 2 pi, which is an arctangent. So the solution to this integral is 1 over pi a, the arctangent of b over a. So since we want the output to contain 90% of the energy in x of t, we write this as the ratio ey over ex is equal to 0 0.9, which means that the energy in y with respect to the energy in x is equal to 0 0.9, or the integral from negative infinity to infinity the magnitude of y of t squared dt divided by the integral from minus infinity to infinity, the magnitude of x of t squared dt is equal to this ratio in the frequency domain, one over pi a, the arctangent of b over a, divided by the total energy in x of t, which is one over two a. So solving this equation, we have 2 over pi, the arctangent of b over a, is equal to 0 0.9 pi divided by 2, or the arctangent of b over a is equal to 0 0.9 pi divided by 2. So taking the tangent of both sides, b over a, is equal to the tangent of 0 0.9 pi divided by 2. And b is equal to a times the tangent of 0 0.9 pi divided by 2. So b is equal to 6.31a, or the width of the low pass filter, which is 2b, would be equal to 12.62a. And this concludes lecture 7-2 on energy and power signals.